and a little bit earlier today, I'm, for your information, I'm taping this on Monday night, September the 19th, so when I say today, I mean September the 19th. A little earlier today, President Obama did a little speech in the Rose Garden and essentially told us how he plans, or how he would like to plan, uh, to pay for that vaunted jobs bill that he wants passed by the Congress. And a key part of that plan involves something that has been colloquially called the Buffett Tax. Now, no, it's not a Jimmy Buffett tax. It's not a, not a tax on margaritas or not a tax on cheeseburgers in paradise. Although I bet Michelle's thought of it. Uh, it's not a tax on middle-aged guys wearing Hawaiian shirts. No, it's not a Jimmy Buffett tax. It's a Warren Buffett tax, if you want to look at it that way. It's basically a tax... Well, let me just, let me just read to you what it is. I'm going to quote to you a little bit from... An Associated Press piece that came out today from a guy named Jim Coonhin. I hope I'm pronouncing that right. Uh, he did the write-up for the AP of, of what Obama's speech was today and what this is about. The Buffett tax is essentially a suggestion that Congress establish a minimum tax on taxpayers making $1 million or more in income. So basically, if you're a millionaire, you're going to get slapped with an, with an extra tax rate that everybody else doesn't have to pay. Now, the interesting thing about this, or to me, the galling thing about this, the most upsetting thing about this, and it's been consistent from Obama all along, is that every time he brings an idea like this up, he consistently refers to the wealthy paying their fair share. Now, some of you uh, who have heard my previous programs or seen the previous shows here, you know how much that, that terminology gets under my skin when Obama says or, or infers that the wealthy currently are not paying their fair share. Now that's absolute horse hockey. Let's think about something for a second. Let's discuss the idea of fairness real quick so that we're all on the same page here. Um, I think we all are familiar with the idea that you know all men are created equal. Okay, we get that. Uh, all men are born with equal rights. Okay, get that. I think we can pretty much all agree on that. But then it stands to reason that if all men are born with equal rights, if all men are created equal, if, if we're all equal in the eyes of our Creator, as the Declaration of Independence said, if that's the case, then would it not follow that if we're all equal, if our rights are all equal, if, that the responsibilities for funding government, the responsibilities for upholding society, would also be equal in that proportional sense? Seems rather obvious to me. But yet, any time you have a progressive tax rate of any sort, you naturally have an unfair tax rate. You actually have you, taxation that is being distributed unfairly. In other words, whatever group of people pay the higher percentage in taxes have more of a responsibility to undertake the government or to, to fund the government, that kind of thing. Whereas those who pay a lower tax percentage, or no taxes at all, have no responsibility to do that. They get all the equal rights, but they don't have to pony up anything for it. They don't have to contribute as much. While that other group that pays a higher percentage, well, they're saddled with more of the bill. How in the heck is that fair? It's not. But yet Obama goes out there and continues this lie that the rich are not paying their fair share of taxes. Is that really true? Is that really true? I, I want to take a look at something here from the National Taxpayers Union. You can look these stats up yourself. This is a little report they have, some numbers they have about who pays income taxes and how much. Now, some of you have probably heard some of these numbers before, or, or numbers very similar to them, uh, but I'm repeating them for a very important reason. You know, when Obama's out there, the, the sitting president of the United States is, is sitting behind a lectern every day of the week, lying to the American people and telling you that the wealthy are not paying their fair share in taxes when I will just demonstrate momentarily that indeed they are. They're actually going above and beyond their fair share. When he does that, I think he's doing it for a very specific reason. Think about human psychology a little bit. If you think of some of the most horrible despots of our time, some of the dictators, some of the con artists, some of the people you've met in your life that, that just are the lowest form of low, the manipulative people out there that you know. If you think back, a lot of them had one characteristic that they shared. And that characteristic was that they would tell you a lie, and no matter how much you 
uh, disprove the lie, how much you argued the lie, how much you didn't believe the lie, they would keep telling you that same lie. And they would tell the lie over and over and over and over and over and over again, no matter what was put in front of their face to dispute it, they would keep sticking that same lie with the knowledge that eventually at least a number of people, at least some people, will throw their hands up and give up and believe the lie, even if they know it's untrue. I think that's what Barack Obama is doing here. He keeps saying that the rich aren't paying their fair share, the rich aren't paying their fair share, the rich aren't paying their fair share, the rich aren't paying their fair share. And every single time he says it, it's a lie. But he knows if he says it so many times that people are going to have a very hard time keeping up with him and telling him every single time, you lie, you lie, you lie, you lie, you lie, you lie, you lie. It takes a lot of effort to do that. And he knows that some of the American people will just eventually give up and start believing it. Not unlike what the left did with, with the war in Iraq. They told us that that war wasn't justified when we all knew it was. And they kept repeating that lie over and over and over and over and over and over and over for eight years to the point that now, sadly, a lot of the American people actually believe that the Iraq war was unjustified when indeed it was extremely justified. Hello, remember 9-11? It really happened. Sorry, got off on a tangent there. But the point being that Obama is smart enough to know if he keeps telling the same lie over and over and over and over and over and over again, some people, namely the people that are stupid enough to vote for him, will believe it. So here's where we come in and disprove it. This is what we have to do all the time. We have to keep disproving this same lie until we, we're blue in the face. So that people will at least see the truth every time that Obama tells the lie. So here's your truth. Who pays income taxes and how much they pay? According to the National Taxpayers Union, the top 1% of earners pay 38.02% of the percentage of federal personal income taxes. So the top 1% pay 38.02%. Does that really sound fair? Let's extend that out to the top 5%. We know the top 1% is 38% of the tax revenue. Top 5%, if you, if you extend it on to them, they pay 58.72% of the taxes. Whoa. I thought Obama said that the rich were being unfairly taxed. Well, they are. The rich are getting hosed. Extend that out to the top 10%. The top 10% pay 69.94%. 10% of the American people pay 70% of the taxes? And you want more? Oh, my God. Now, there's your wealthiest Americans, which is just to put you and I into this mix. Just to put those of us in the middle class in this mix. Just to, to make this resonate to everybody. Let's extend this out to the top 25%. The top 25% of earners pay 86.34% of the taxes. And the top 50% that I would wager a good number of you out there listening to this show would fall into this. The top 50% of wage earners pay 97.3% of the taxes. What about that bottom 50%? They pay 2.7%. Now tell me who's getting hosed and who's being unfairly taxed. Tell me who's not paying their fair share after those numbers. It ain't the rich. So now that we've seen the unfair way in which the wealthiest Americans are taxed, Obama calls them the most fortunate Americans, I think a better term is the most accomplished Americans. Now that we've seen the unfair way in which the most accomplished Americans are taxed and how the least accomplished Americans and least contributing Americans are not taxed, let's take a look at this specific plan that Obama put forth today. And again, a lot of this is quoting from this Jim Cunin article on the Associated Press, so if you want to look up any of this, that's where you can find it. Uh, quoting from Cunin here, the President's proposal, which he challenged Congress to approve, would predominantly hit upper income taxpayers and would also target tax loopholes and subsidies used by many larger corporations. Wait a second. We just proved that the wealthiest Americans are paying more than their fair share of taxes and that when Obama says they are paying less than their fair share, Obama is lying. However, here he goes, trying to take even more money from those people that are already funding everything for us anyway. How fair is that? It's not fair at all. 
In addition, Obama said, quoting again, Obama said he would veto any legislation that cut Medicare benefits without raising new revenue. Wait, didn't we just have this debate like three or four weeks ago, and Mr. President, you lost that debate? Talk about digging up old graves, you're doing it again. No, it's not. We're, we're not going to go for that. You know we're not going to go for that. Bottom line is that he knows this isn't going to get passed, and, and we know we're not going to pass it. This is all just political kabuki theater. But since he's out there uh, bloviating the American public, we might as well call him out on it. Now, another interesting thing to look at here, understanding, again, that the specific Buffett tax, uh, which was the... Uh, tax on the, the taxpayers paying over a million dollars, or that make over a million dollars, combined, of course, with the Bush tax cuts running out. Hey, that's part of the plan, too, huh? Yeah, real nice. Uh, combined with all of that, making the case that it's time for the wealthy to pay their fair share and they don't pay enough, but there's another pesky little thing out there, and even, even Cunin and the AP, which is not a conservative news source, even he points it out. Quoting from Hewn here, he says, On average, however, the wealthiest people in America pay a lot more in taxes than the middle class or the poor, according to the Nonpartisan Tax Policy Center. This year, households making more than $1 million will pay, on average, 29.1% of their income in federal taxes. A household making between $50,000 and $75,000 will pay 15% of its income in federal taxes, which includes income taxes and Social Security payroll taxes. So, I thought Obama wanted people to pay their fair share. Now, it's been a few years since I've been in school, but the last time I checked, 29.1% was a higher number than 15%, like twice the size of that number. So if what you're looking for is fairness, then it would sound to me like you'd want to bring those two numbers closer together, right? Right? Oh no, Obama wants to take that 29.1% and move it further away. That's unfair! Got it? You cannot call that fair. You cannot say that the wealthy Amer wealthiest Americans are not paying their fair share in taxes because they are paying more than their fair share. They are getting hosed. And as a result, partially of them getting hosed, that's one of the big reasons our economy is in the pickle that it's in. Our economy is not in a pickle because you're not taxing the wealthy enough. It's because you're taxing them too much. We talked about this a couple of weeks ago. It is the mere fact that we have an unstable, an unfair, and, and probably more importantly what you might call an unknown environment for investors. They don't know when they invest how much they're going to have to invest. They don't know when the other shoe's going to drop regarding taxes as far as Obama's concerned. They don't know how much Obamacare is going to impact them and how much you're going to have to invest in that. So why would you invest in this country when you have an unknown quantity about there? It, it would be like sitting down to a blackjack game and not knowing what the minimum bet is. Well, that's what you're expecting the job creators to do. So what do those job creators do? They invest their money overseas where they don't have to worry about crap like this. Now, I gave you the answer a couple of weeks ago. You repeal as much regulation as you can. You repeal as much taxation as you can. You make it as favorable of an environment in America to invest as you can, but you are not doing that. Those who can make substantial investments in America are in a very unsure environment where they don't know how much they're going to have to invest, they don't know in what positions that investment is going to take place, and they don't know how much of a return on their investment they're going to make. They can go many other places in the world where it is a much more sure environment for them. But instead of addressing that, you are instead proposing more unfair taxes on the wealthy and therefore making it an even more unsure environment investment. So how the hell is that going to create jobs? Well, it's not. And you know it's not. Let's be very clear about what needs to happen. And I said it before, this is going to be political kabuki theater. He knows this isn't going to pass, and we know we're not going to pass it. Don't get me wrong. There's things in that original job speech that might be places we can negotiate on and, and talk about and come to the bargaining table on. I get that. 
but increased taxes on the job creators is off the table. Period. So I don't care what you put in a bill, I don't care what you propose, as long as increasing taxes on any American is a part of that, no, we're not negotiating. Take that off the table, we can talk. Got it? So that's what this is all going to come down to. Obama is trying to make this class warfare, and the GOP has pointed that out today. But I think he's overlooking something, and this is very key. We all know that America is somewhat divided as a country right now, pretty divided. But do we ever really think about why we're divided, or what specifically that division is? I really don't think that we are divided in terms of Republican versus Democrat. In fact, if you look at just about any poll, it'll tell you that most Americans have a pretty low opinion of both parties. I don't even think that we're divided along lines of liberal and conservative, although that sort of comes close to explaining it, but not quite. I don't, I don't think that's a, a pervasive enough explanation. Maybe it's a foot in the door, but it doesn't explain the whole thing. I don't even think we're divided in terms of rich versus poor, which is what Obama's trying to get you to believe. No, we are divided in another way. And I've talked about this a couple times before, but I'll be honest, I've had a real tough time coming up with a phrasing of this phenomenon that, that would catch on, or that, would, that would resonate with people. I mean, we all know in this day and age that if you make a point, you have to say it in a two or three word phrase that will resonate with people. People think in slogans instead of ideas. I don't really like that, but that's the reality of the world we live in. So I think I finally stumbled upon, or I think I finally come up with the right phrase for this. The divide in our country is not between Republicans and Democrats. It's not between liberals and conservatives. It's not between rich and poor. The divide in our country right now is between producers and parasites. Now, what do I mean by that? Producers, I mean the people that get up in the morning to go out and make something of themselves, make a life for themselves, make money for themselves and their families, and do so on their own without the interference of the government or without expecting other people to foot the bill for them. Those people versus the parasites, the people who want to live off the government, the people that want to live off the backs of those of us who are producers. That 50% I just told you about who pay only 2.7% of the taxes and are also the same people that get all the welfare and are also the same people that get all the EBT cards and are also the same people that want all the government programs and mostly are also the same people that voted for Barack Hussein Obama. Do you see a connection? It's pretty clear. Obama's appealing to his base in this. He is appealing to the parasites. And he wants to victimize the producers. Barack Obama is not the president of the United States of America. He is the president of that 50% of Americans who are the parasites. That's who he is the president of. That's who he represents. That's who he does the bidding for. If you are a small business person, if you are someone trying to make a life for yourself, if you are someone who wants to do well by your family on your own merits, Barack Obama doesn't care about you. He finds you to be the enemy. But if you're someone who wants to spit out another kid so you can get another government check, or if you're someone who wants to go on welfare, or if you're someone who wants to sit at home and, and take unemployment benefits, you are just the kind of person that Barack Obama is looking for because he wants you to be dependent on him. He wants you to trade your liberty so that he can have power. That's what this whole thing comes down to. Don't believe them when they tell you it's rich versus poor. I mean, when we say it's producers versus parasites, let's face it, there's a lot of people you could consider producers who aren't wealthy. I'm in the middle class. I would consider myself a producer. A lot of other people would too. There's a lot of parasites who are wealthy, you know, people that, that want to have that, uh, that, that government money to start up their green jobs company. So it's much more than rich versus poor. This upcoming election and all the political debates we're having are about one central concept. Those who have the guts to go out and make a life for themselves versus those who are too gutless to do so. Obama represents the gutless and the parasites. The Republicans, hopefully, and certainly the Tea Party, Represent the producers. Represent those who have guts. Represent those who do not need a federal government to lead them by the hand. That's what the whole thing's about.
Keep an eye on that going forward towards 2012. This is America's Evil Genius. We'll see you next week.